How's it going this morning, Leo? It's going good. Staying wanna, busy. Want to tell the viewers what you did for me this morning while I was uh, busy at work not being here? So I set up a heater, try and get some of the um, fiberglass and epoxy to set yep. that we put on yesterday. Uh, and then I sanded the inside walls of the hole, yep. try and get those all flat so we can do more magic to them, whatever Simon decides that is. Yeah. And, Are you uh, feeling pressure yet? Is the, t is the timetable cooking away in your head? Uh, I don't think I fully understand the timetable, but I know that we need to be on top of our stuff. Uh, so I'm just trying to make sure I'm staying busy, uh, hoping that staying busy on the front end of my visit, maybe we can uh, goof off a little more on the tail end. But yes, sir. maybe it'll be busy the whole way through and I'm okay with that. Well, luckily I think we're gonna be hamstring mostly by wait times, which means as long as we're set up and we follow the timetable, we should have actually some time to ourselves while things dry. But the key is the boat should always be wet. So we always need to have something drying in order to make the most of this. In that spirit, we're gonna go lay some glass right away. How you feeling today, honey? You having a good day? Oh, good girl, yeah, good girl. Okay, come on, let's go. All right, well that took a lot longer than I was expecting. I might have to reevaluate getting the entire bridge deck completely done on this hollow. But we're gonna get the parts done, especially that I cannot do in the water. And that's glass and fairing. Um, I also wanna give huge ups. Leo, check these out. These are heavy duty magnets. I just so happen to have them lying around and it was Leo's idea. He's like, oh man, if only we had some magnets to stick on the other side, we could hold the glass up. I'm like, we do have magnets. It worked so well. It worked so, so well. I'm really like, that's awesome. Between that and the roller and being on the hard, I don't think I could have done that without Leo's help and without those those things. So you got two massive uh, pieces done. That's like uh, uh, four, <laughs> a lot of square feet, maybe like 40 square feet there. But I can really feel it in my back and we're gonna have to finish that off tomorrow. In the meantime, Sun is setting, uh, but we're not quite done yet. We're gonna get some fairing on here and hopefully that'll cure off quickly because the timetable is ticking away in my head here. It's ticking away and it's driving me crazy. Okay, the weather is not so nice today, but that's okay because we've got some uh, stuff that's gonna work out pretty well. The temperature's up just a little bit, and so the epoxy's gonna actually cure a little bit faster despite the fact that there's no sun because most of the places on this boat that we're epoxying are in the shade all the time anyways. So Leo's over there and he is epoxying like a madman, doing some fairing second coat. And he's doing an immaculate job, aren't you Leo? He's doing a perfect job and so perfect we're not even gonna have to sand it after. That's how good it's gonna be. So then as soon as that cures, we'll be able to do some primer. In the meantime, I've got just a gung show of mess to deal with in here. Let me show you what I'm doing. Because I built this underwater, I had some problems, mainly with this gap here. It fluctuates a little bit 
getting it to fit perfectly was almost impossible. So I'm building little cedar filler pieces that will get epoxied in. Um, I won't just use pure epoxy uh, because I'll run out of uh, filler compound. So we're gonna use some cedar strips all along here to give us a nice chamfered edge. Of course, that changes as the boat goes on. So it's a tedious job, somebody's gotta do it. So let's get to it. This life is like a fever dream. I'm lost because I wanna be. If you'll find me, I'll be somewhere. What do I got there? It's awesome. Well, we got it all done. A huge amount of fairing, which the battery died on this thing, so we didn't get all of it on camera, but we fared an entire boat today. We did. We started on the port side hull, right at the bow, all the way around, into the back, across, and up the other side. Uh, now, a lot of this has already been fared last fall, but I mean, that was, pretty rough and we sanded and there's huge sections that hadn't been fared at all. So, uh, how many pots of epoxy do you think we made today? Well, maybe less than 20. I'd say probably 10 and 15, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're very disgusting and gross. And I've my, changed. My onesie is, I feel like I'm crawling out of uh, a glazed donut right now. It's just disgusting. It's just so gross. Uh, we're gonna go head up to the village, load up on some fuel for our heaters, bake this damn boat because hopefully the next two days we'll get some sunshine. The fairing is done, so it has to cure. And then we can give it a light sanding and start some paint. So bummed. <laughs> What a gorgeous day today. It's a good thing too, because we're getting really close to the end of the hollow. We have uh, just over two days left to get all of this stuff done. And as you'll notice behind me, it's not done yet. We're baking off all the work we did yesterday. And then, uh, you know, we're gonna rush along getting this glass up because there should not be any more glass work to do at this point in the game. We're really pushing it back. But uh, we gotta get it done, we gotta get it done. And it's the worst part of the game, so. See if we can do it.
This is sucking up a lot of our time. We ran out of fiberglass and swapped over to this. It's like the thinnest stuff they have at the shop and it's a nightmare to work with. So thick, sucking up all of it. I think we should switch to CSM. There's some thinner CSM in there. Okay. But I don't know if CSM is gonna work with our roller setup. So we'll have to figure that out. But we've got glassed up to there and then we got a glass at the front. So there's like, you know, what? what is that, five feet to do there? And then the rest of this uh, starboard side. Uh, but uh, then that'll be that. I am content with just getting the glass up and doing the, trying to do the fairing and the painting and the, all that in the mud this summer because I'm just running out of time. And it'll we'll see. be above the waterline. And it's all above the waterline and it's all been fine so far, so whatever, but what a mess, what a mess. Just want it done, just want it done. Yeah, Mike is helping us out. He's doing the water line. Big responsibility because we've already proven that I'm not uh, responsible enough for that task. <laughs> so, <laughs> so instead, I get the honor of putting the first bit of color. Yes, I know white's not a color, but the first bit of primer on this boat. So let's cap off this episode. Let's get a little primer on this, baby. Okay, today's the last day. I am incredibly sore, I'm incredibly tired, and I'm also incredibly excited. We're gonna get some color on this boat today, so let's get started. Okay, so the primer is done back there and it is just hardening up. We've got a little bit left dry on the starboard side in the shape, but all the sunny bits, bits we did yesterday, they're all dry and sanded and ready to go. So we're laying on the paint, polyurethane one part, flag blue. Now I've been researching for six months on this stuff and trying to figure out the best, most cost-effective paint. Uh, asked everyone their advice, didn't really get much in response. This, that, the other, pretty much everyone suggested something else. Now that I finally bought the paint, I can't pass somebody without them saying, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. And they would suggest whatever is their favorite paint. So if you have a favorite paint, you can talk about it in the comments and y'all can battle it out. Obviously, I'm not gonna do it because I already have the paint in my hand. I'm gonna go paint my boat now. And I'm sure it will fail and look horrible. But, you know, that's what we're with. So let's just, you, can learn from my mistakes. If this was a mistake, you'll know soon, and then you won't have to buy it. If it's great, maybe just own up to it, it's great.
right, well look at this. First coat of paint. We're gonna put a second coat here in a minute as it's just drying up. But uh, I, I think we're, we're, we're judging like, what do you think? So Adam, Adam's back by the way. And Adam is giving us the review. So is it a one foot boat, five foot boat, 10 foot boat, 15, 20, four miles? What is it? Uh, we'll do 15. 15 foot? 15, 15, 15 yeah. foot boat. Yeah. So that means that it looks good from exactly 15 feet away. <laughs> Any closer, you start to see the imperfections. But so we'll just stay, we'll keep you guys right over here. Oh, doesn't she look good? All right, let's get that second coat on. Maybe we can bump it up to a 10 foot boat, huh? Lit up in the sky like an angel. All right, so yep. what, are, what did you make us? Okay, it's a cardamom or a maple cardamom uh, old fashioned. So bourbon, maple syrup, cardamom bitters, and an orange. I'm gonna give it to this guy because he needs some human. <laughs> Thank you. There we are. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Clinks. Clink. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. These two clowns right here. They're so good. Is it too spicy for you there, Leo? No, it's good. Yeah. Good morning. Might have drank a little bit too much last night. Feeling a little rough. Celebrated perhaps too early. Uh, we are just on, still on the ways by only 30 seconds. We are currently going down the ways and into the water. So, uh, have you seen Leo? Uh, he disappeared. Well, Is he in the bathroom? I don't, know. I don't think he's gonna make it. <laughs> what do you think, boss? No, no, okay. You'll never find your boat now. <laughs> it's too dark. Run, Leo, run! It's been nice knowing you, Leo. She's floating. Oh. That water line's still high. We screwed that one up. It's still a bit high, but high is better than low. That's the uh, nautical kick right there. That's yeah, right. That's an important move. You gotta learn that one uh, there, Adam. Be gone with you. Nautical kung fu? Nautical kung fu. It's almost as good as uh, boat yoga. Boat yoga. <laughs> also Marine yoga. Marine yoga. Marine Sorry, yoga. my bad. <laughs> Who knows, it might be on a submarine. Mm. I don't want to make judgments. Well, she's gone, she's gone. Got it. First fruit reverse for more turning. It takes a bit of energy to move this thing uh, rotationally, eh? Oh, yeah, it's so wide, right? So you don't want to turn?
built it up, then knocked it down. Watched her walk out the door, and then dropped to the ground. A kiss and a shrug is the word you well, the haul out is done. We're back in the water and the boat looks so good. Uh, but speaking of so good, I wanna talk really quickly about Yord, who sent out another one of their fantastic watches. Kinda of have a policy about uh, sponsors and that unless I really wanna do it, which is usually because it helps the boat, I usually don't. But Yord was like, well, we've got another watch. I said, well, I already have one of your watches and it's fantastic and I don't need two watches. I'm a one watch kind of guy and they said, when we made this one completely out of coffee and epoxy and I said, oh, my two favorite things. Okay, yeah, I'll take one. And you guys can have one too. So now this watch is a little understated. It's very minimalistic. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. I forget it's on my wrist all the time. And for me, that's a watch that I enjoy. One that looks good, one that feels good, and one that doesn't bother me and doesn't impede my work. Now, it might not impede my work, but I'm not gonna go wear it when I go into that shop and work on my motorcycle because they made the wristband out of a nice cork material and it's quite fragile as you can see i've already scuffed it a little bit now i'm pretty hard on my stuff so i don't think that should be a measure of how you guys will fare with it but truth be told this is watch is one i'm going to really crack out for special occasions which basically means i'm leaving the island to go see melly in the city i'll put the watch on and you know it's it looks great it fits with most of anything I wear and of course it's made from coffee which is pretty cool. Now if anything I just said piques your interest including the words free watch um, there's a form in the description you guys can fill out. If enough of you enter they give away a free watch and I either way I get to keep mine so I'm happy but I'd like to make you guys happy too. Check it out link in the description. Thank you Yord for sending out this awesome watch and uh, I'm really sorry that I mispronounced Yord last time. Um, Yord. J-O-R-D, Yord. All right, let's get back to work. We're just gonna goof off on this motorcycle, cut up some more pieces of metal, maybe weld some stuff, have some fun this afternoon. The boat's gotta go bake in the sun and uh, let's get this motorcycle back on the road because the spring is around the corner. <laughs> oh, hi, honey. Hi. Yarr. Hi. Yarr. Yarr. Shit. Well, now what? <laughs> now what do you do, huh? Why are oh. tools so hard to use? This is this is professional. This is how you do it. This is how you rivet. it. Yo, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that you don't break these with a hammer because that might fail. It might, the whole rivet might fail. Yeah. You gotta break them with a clamp thing that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. All right, it's very sick. Part of it is like, I want to build this part, go out and ride it, see how much it rattles. Mm -hmm. See if it's still comfortable. Yeah. Modify it till it's comfortable. Then bolt the bags up, see if they're still comfortable. Modify it again. Yep. I want it to be a running bike the whole time. So yep. the fact that I took the seat off kind of pisses me. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Not bad. Oh, except when it stalls. <laughs> and that goes a little bit through that aluminum. Yeah. Oh, it's something. I like that. 
like that. I have to adjust these though. See if you look over from my side. Yeah. If you look right here. This is bent in. This one's bent out. So obviously these brackets need to be adjusted a bit. But you also got like, I think I might put some meshing down in here, down there, close this wiring up a little bit, tidy that all up. And then we got to figure out some sort of bubble shield situation. I want something unique up here. I like what we had before, it was okay, but I want to go, I want to go weirder, something cooler. Anyway, if you guys have ideas on all of this stuff, just leave it in the description. Um, I'm always up for ideas. I've been like perusing the crowd out of Instagram, trying to find some cool ideas and also perusing the junkyards around here, looking for some cool pieces of aluminum and steel to bolt onto this thing. She's gonna be sick when she's done. All right, we're back on the boat. Um, I said goodbye to Adam uh, today and Leo yesterday. And I, those two are awesome. I couldn't have done this project without them. I couldn't have done it without the help of uh, all my other friends that came out, you know, Captain Mike doing the waterline and um, Vern here to paint and Patrick was there day one, uh, Brock was by, and Melly organized this whole thing and put my life in order so I could actually achieve all of this. So it was really a group effort and uh, it got done and I am blown away at the change. It is awesome. And just before I close this episode, last shout out for Yord for sending out that cool watch so that I can look a little bit cooler on my next date with Melly and less like the homeless boat builder that I am. If you guys are interested in getting a free watch, the link is in the description, check it out. And that's it, that's all from me. I'm going to bed. I'm very, 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 very tired.